so I am quite excited today to come to Malin Engineering and give you guys a little bit of history here with Paul Jones. Uh, we all know how automation has come to its fruition today, but where did it start and at what time frame did it start? Uh, Paul and I are going to share a bit of this history with you and we're excited to be here. So Paul, go ahead. Yeah, well this company, Mayland Engineering, was actually formed back in the 1970s, 1978. And um, it's got a rich history in, uh, in what you can see here in machining. But where they actually started the company was machining um, heels for shoes. So around this area, for those that don't know around the world, this, there's a big shoe industry in Northamptonshire. And uh, yeah, they started out basically machining like the molds for the, for the heels right, of the shoes yeah. uh, out of wood, would you believe? And then they moved into the 80s into, uh, into making um, uh, grinding punches and dies uh, for, for forming as well. So they've got that sort of heritage. But what happened quite interestingly in talking to the managing director here, Steve, was that his dad wanted to improve the productivity. And it was Peter that founded the company, his dad, Peter Weiss, back in 78. And what he couldn't do was get enough hours out of that spindle on the machine. Sure. And he didn't want to buy another machine, but he wanted to improve what he was getting out. So we're going back decades here where he was trying to make these improvements. So he went to the market looking for pallet systems, and he said they were too expensive. Uh -huh. I'm going to make my own. And that's fundamentally... This what is we, how it all started. This is how it all started, and this is what we see here in the Mayland pallet system, which, uh, to my notes here, was about 1994 was the first one that was um, wow. in the market. And this is a problem that people still have today about how can I keep my spindle running? How can I maximize the efficiency of my machine and keep it going the entire time without these these long tool changes and pallet changes and vice changes that everyone's going through. And the fact that he thought of this in a less expensive way back in 1994, kind of futuristic thinking, right? Yeah, that, that's exactly it. And I think now, to date, you're looking at over, over 400 of these installed around the UK, and they're still for sale, and they're still selling. Um, they're manufactured here in Corby. So every part that you see here is made at this facility, uh, all out of uh, stainless steel, uh, steel and, and, and castings. Um, but if you, if you want spares, they're still available here as well. Um, so basically, whether it's a new system that you want to maybe introduce this, what we class as manual automation, you can still get that, but it's supported as well, which is important. Right, and, and to my knowledge, we do have things on the market right now called quick change systems that uh, kind of force you to pick up a vise, take the vise off of the quick change system, which uses a bit of muscle, right? Maybe, maybe a little bit of back strain. So if we have the larger vices and the heavier materials, like some of those steels and irons, a system like this could really come in handy where it does all of the heavy lifting for you, right? Yeah, I think, that, I think that's exactly it. And I think that was one of the considerations when they developed it. You don't want to be, a, an operator really wants to try and do his work outside of the machine. The minute you kind of go into the, into the machining area, you are introducing those health and safety elements. You're making it a bit more awkward. Whereas if you can stand here, and you know, and, and, and do all of these operations at the machine, it's far, far simpler. What also is impressive as well is, how long do you think this takes to attach to a normal machine like we see here? Arguably, without seeing it done, uh, I would think it would take yeah, an hour or so to attach to the machine, right? And that's exactly it. Yeah, it's just an hour to put on a machine. So you could purchase one of these, have it on the machine, and be, you know, be up and running straight away uh, and improving, potentially doubling the output of this spindle. Now, a lot of our listeners may already know this, and you kind of touched on it briefly, but it is incredibly significant to have one job running and have another one ready to go. And that can be the same exact job or a completely different job. But you know that within a few seconds that you could shift and put a new job into the machine just like that. This is it. And this is the big argument between vertical machining centers and horizontal machining centers, pallet systems. The reality is these, these spindles, as you see it here, it's idle at the moment. And I mean, it's idle because we're standing here talking about the, you know, the pallet system. But... The more time that that isn't rotating, it, it's costing the business money, or more importantly, it's not making them money. Every machine needs to make money. What also happens a lot is we find engineers go out and buy another machine. I need another spindle, I need another spindle. Well, hang on a minute, have you got enough out of that one yet? You know, it's a big point. Have, exactly right. Have you, have you made the most out of the one you've already got? You know, there could be an argument to say a lot haven't, and if they haven't, how do they? And systems like this can do this very affordably more importantly. So I have two questions um, 
firstly, do you, you, did Steve let you know uh, what the precision is of taking one of these out and putting one of them in? What's the repeatability of these? I believe it's about 10 microns and there's a lot of clamping force. It's a 100% mechanical system, so there's no uh, pneumatics, no hydraulics. It's like a toggle clamping system, very quick to activate. Um, but yeah, that's quite some repeatability. And in fact, the biggest system they've installed is just under two meters in size. That's impressive. So, you can get a lot of components on a two meter plate and again that's something that you wouldn't be able to necessarily do maybe with some of the other systems that you mentioned because it'd be quite arduous moving you know a table like that into a machine right the second question i have to go along with that repeatability is do we know what kind of load these things can take how much weight can i put on here that i can move easily back and forth it depends on size um, i haven't got the exact detail but what i can tell you is that these tables can normally take six seven hundred kilos i believe that the company here would be trying to accommodate that on these pallet systems as well so mm -hmm. it would be hundreds of kilos and i think when you look at how they're built these guys are engineers i mean you know you, we talk about the rich heritage they're using all of the um, the triangular methods of constructing things as, you, as you'd see in any good building around the world. Yeah, and it beats using a crane all day. 100%. You don't want to be doing that. Do and you? have you had the opportunity to play with this yet? No, but you're going to show us now. I, I would be happy to. Far away. So we have two levers here. The one on the left, all you're going to do is pull it out, which allows you to slide left to right. Now you push the right hand lever to the right, which then allows you to push the pallet into the machine. Once you have it centered and located, all you do is lock the handle in place, shut the doors and press go like you would any other time on any other setup. And it is literally that simple. Now, if I wanted to go a bit quicker instead of you know talking to everyone and explaining what's going on, you easily pull it out, locks into place and shift. You could probably do it within five to 10 seconds at a slow rate. Now, this is an increased or reduce setup time of 80, 90% when it comes to manually taking a vise out, possibly using a crane if it's heavy parts. To me, this makes a whole lot of sense for someone who's in the market to save a bit of money on a robot and just do it manually. Yeah, 100%. And I think the good thing is as well is this can be fitted to any machine tool, pretty much any brand of machine. There's just certain areas, certain dimensions that the company need to know but once they know those uh yeah within a few weeks you can have one of these systems up and running within your machine shop yeah and so last question i have for you where can we buy one of these so this is maylan engineering based here in corby they're looking for distributors around the world to be able to distribute this product so uh, you can buy it direct here from the uk but i'm sure as a result of this mtd global video will be plenty of people around the world that will be looking to distribute something like this that can uh, change a machine from being maybe inefficient into efficient. Hello.